Wolf. Hello, the dog log crew, community, dog loggers, I think I ended up calling you last. I was watching Crufts this year and I saw that there was a Kennel Club Accredited Instructor Trainer of the Year uh, award and I've met one in the past, not really chatted to her properly, but I went to Jane Arden's course uh, weekend away. You probably saw the vlog, if not, go and find it on the video somewhere. And then I, um, I saw that it was somebody different and I thought I'd just get in touch. And the person is Barry Harris. And Barry was kind enough to say, yeah, come on down and let's have a bit of a chat. And I thought it would be a great opportunity for those out there who kind of are starting out to talk to somebody who's been doing this for a while and has essentially got to the top of his game um, and become the trainer of the year. Um, so thank you very much for your time today, Barry. No problem at all. Um, I just wanted to start off by asking you a little bit about where did your journey start? What was your first kind of <coughs> introduction to dog training? Not really just dogs, but you can talk yeah. about your first dog if you want. Well, my, my very first dog was, um, was a little mongrel. Um, and he was absolutely gorgeous, fell in love with him. I, was th I must have been about six or seven. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And it, although he was the family pet, um, my mum's got pictures of me, you know, putting leads on him and taking him out for walks and things like that. Um, from, you know, such a young age. So I really, really loved dogs. Had dogs all our lives. Uh, always been interested in how, how to train them. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> this, this poor little dog, it's quite a funny story. <laughs> we, um, we got broken into and um, the burglars broke in and this dog was, you know, he was great with everyone. <laughs> and all they did was shoot him into the toilet while they robbed the house. This <laughs> <laughs> way, please. <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay, yeah. So off he went, uh, no hassle. And then they helped themselves to everything. But luckily next door's dog wasn't quite so friendly. <laughs> so <laughs> had to drop the microwave on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so that was sort of where my earliest memories really of, of yeah. owning a dog um, came from. Then obviously growing up we've had, uh, we had Rhodesian Ridgebacks, so great big dogs. Um, next door's dog was a Rhodesian Ridgeback, I think that's why my mum said let's get a Rhodesian Ridgeback. <laughs> Stop the next burglars <laughs> yeah, coming the next in. the burglars coming in. Um, and they were, they were big powerful dogs, um, which meant for, for someone as young as I was, um, it was quite difficult to, to walk. Mm -hmm. um, those dogs. So I, I wanted to walk them. My mum's like, oh no, they're too big for you. Me and Harley met and we got a bull mastiff. We said, let's contact, um, let's contact um, someone on the Kennel Club Good Citizens game. So we went and we, we did um, his puppy uh, classes um, with this big, <laughs> big <Bullmastiff>. massive puppy. <laughs> um, and we went to class and what was the bull master's name by the way it was duke yeah duke lovely cool. big boy he was um and um it was let's take him to classes let's get him training so that holly could obviously walk him as well as myself mm -hmm. uh, it's all right for me being a big blaley bloke and having this huge dog um but holly being about eight stone <laughs> stone dog yeah um so it was like let's get him trained let's train him right mm -hmm. um so off we took him to to puppy classes and in the puppy class, it was very harsh handling. Oh, was it? Um, so there was a lot of pulling on the lead. Don't the do that. Problems. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which obviously I could do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm being trained by a trainer. I've got mm -hmm. no reason not to trust what they're telling me. So I could administer the lead pops, mm -hmm. um, and I could shout at him and and just stop him from uh, lunging towards other dogs. Obviously, he was a big puppy, he just wanted to play. Yeah. But then we're, we're, we're lead popping him mm. uh, all the way along. Um, and then we did probably three classes, and on the third class, it was like, well, Holly's the reason we're here, you know, so she can help walk Duke, you know, it's her dog as well, it's not just my dog. Yeah. Um, so me, me and Holly's mum. <laughs> <laughs> stood inside the training arena um, as Holly flew past the window being pulled along by the dog in the pouring rain. <laughs> oh man. Um, so although that tickled us, obviously it meant that the training we were doing wasn't really helping. So we started, myself and Holly, just looking for different ways of training. <laughs> and then weirdly we started using food <laughs> um, to help him. Yeah. Um, because we got to a point where we were going down onto a beach and we were starting to become uh, reactive at all the dogs. Um, 
probably Apart too frustration. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. He couldn't. You know, he was at the end of a lead. We couldn't let him off because his recall was going amiss. Mm -hmm. uh, partly because he didn't want to be on the lead anymore. Um, and it got to the final straw where we, we took him down to the beach and we couldn't even get down to the sand, um, which was only a slope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because this dog was pulling us, he's, he's lunging out at dogs, he's barking. And we turned around and came away from the beach. So we were no longer enjoying mm -hmm. having our dog. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when we, we literally started our journey and said, like, let's see what else we can do mm -hmm. to train this dog and have a, a much better dog. Uh, it's interesting dog. that your, your kind of um, final uh, sort of point of going, we need to do something about this, kind of yeah. set you towards, you know, a reward-based training Absolutely. line. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that that's what the trainers were like at the time. And it's yes. the people yeah. who are doing the classes have the knowledge. Yeah. And so it's for the, the clients to kind of trust them in the way that they're, they're teaching that you just kind of go, okay, you know. That's exactly right. You know, who, who's I to say, well, this person teaching me is completely wrong. Yeah. Um, they're the one with the accreditations. Uh, they're the ones running the training classes. They're the ones teaching all these dogs. And we've been recommended, oh, go to so-and-so. They'll mm -hmm. help you uh, with, work with your dog. So I'm taking somebody's opinion and going, yeah, okay. And then finding mm -hmm. out that it wasn't really working for us. Mm -hmm. um, it might well work for a lot of other dogs, but for mm -hmm. us, it wasn't really working. Um, big belly bloke, I can, I can yank him, <laughs> but then Holly couldn't. Mm -hmm. She couldn't administer that same punishment. Um, so what was your so first dabble in the kind of training alternatively? I think it was probably the lead work, <laughs> the lead work you know, getting to walk nicely on the lead. Yeah. You know, big old dog, let's get him walking nicely on the lead. Although I'd take the credit for it, it was probably Holly that found the book or found, you know, somebody else's way of training. Because uh, she was the one that really wanted to walk a dog yeah, though. Yeah. Man, yeah. Women are much smarter than men as well. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a reason that a lot of the best dog trainers out there are women. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not today, though. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Lads, eh, Bill? Lads. Lads. Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously Holly wanted to, to be able to walk this dog. Mm -hmm. um, and using food was a great idea. And mm -hmm. then we, we started teaching him tricks. And this is uh, what was probably getting on now for about a 15 stone bull mastiff. Um, and we did, I think we did some videos of him closing the door on cue. Yeah. Um, which he, and he's a 15 stone mastiff. He didn't close it quietly. <laughs> he just bang, <laughs> shut the door. <laughs> Reward me. Yeah. <laughs> so I've done it. I've done it. Um, so things like speaking on cue as well. Um, mm -hmm. So if I was out at work and someone was at the door, Holly could just ask him to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got this dog going, <laughs> <laughs> whoever's on the other side, they're probably thinking, oh, I won't push me way past this lady, or, you know, just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he kept it safe, but little did they know it's just a trick. Yeah, this, yeah, this just dog, chatting. This 15 stone mastiff, like, the softest thing in the world <laughs> but they didn't know that <laughs> chest capacity yeah. to scare anybody yeah, that's it. Mm. and he was fantastic and people saw our videos mm -hmm. um or saw the dog um saw us walking down the street with him and going oh my god this is walk so nice mm -hmm. um and i had that's really where our training journey started you know mm -hmm. people were getting in touch and saying i could do with some help you mm -hmm. know with my dog and he's a bull mastiff or he's mm -hmm. a german shepherd um, and that's probably where yeah. we got bitten by the bug, both of us. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. You do get kind of yeah. attracted to the, the sense of, can I help through a way which is rewarding for both me, owner and dog? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's right. And I don't think even people who, who, who do administer punishment, I don't think at the end of the day that that's something they want to do anyway. Mm. You know, they don't go out to get a dog and go, well, you're going to be my subservient. You're mm. going to do exactly what I say. I'm going to show you no affection whatsoever. That's not the idea of having a dog. Mm. I don't think. I started to get involved with the KCAI. I think it was about five or six years ago. Um, because as a dog trainer, um, I had had no qualifications in it. Um, it was all stuff I'd learned along the way. Um, going to, and attending talks with my peers, the likes of Jane Arden, mm. Nando Brown, Joe Rusey Hafferton, you know, all, all, all the people who I've watched do YouTube blogs and things like that. And I've mm. been like, I like what they do. I like what they're about. And going and finding out more information about it. Mm -hmm. So although I'm going out and I'm finding more information and I'm listening to these people who, who know a lot more than I did, um, I didn't have 
I still didn't have a qualification to say, well, Barry knows his stuff, go and speak to Barry. Mm. So I was like, right, I need to get something to say, Barry does know his stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I found the Kennel Club accredited uh, instructor scheme and signed up and started working through the scheme to make sure, obviously, w everything that I'm going away, I'm learning, I'm able to put towards um, the, the scheme itself. Mm -hmm. um, and it's taken, it's taken years <laughs> of, Good, of speaking right? to lots of different people, mm. um, attending different courses, different workshops, and listening to some incredible people uh, along the way, you know. Um, I, I love, I love, Getting a break, uh, from, going to a dog, dog training event, and going to a dog training <laughs> event, yeah, which is the only type of holidays I ever get. Yeah, um, but that's what I like. You know, I like to be able to go away and get another person's opinion on on what they think. Uh, Take a little bit of that information yeah, and just yeah. apply it to your own stuff. And that's it. And you're not you're not going to go there and go. I'm going to use everything. Um, mm. It might be. It might be. We were talking before. It might be something we don't agree on. Um, mm you necessarily wouldn't use that part of it, yeah. but then you'll find other bits that you do like. Yeah, yeah. Um, or you'll find that you've been doing it wrong <laughs> for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's getting other people's opinions, thinking about it, and then putting it, taking the bits that you like and, and putting them into action, um, yeah. and then having something to show for it at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, which is why I started working towards uh, the accreditation. Yeah. So you start working towards it, right? Yep. And then what do you think it was that allowed you or, or got you now to the point of winning? What do you think it was that they saw that they went, wow, that's fantastic. Nobody else is offering something like that this year yeah. um, and got you where you are. Um, in all honesty, I don't really know. <laughs> I, for me, it's just I go out and I help people with their dogs. Um, it's great that my clients have then put me forward for the award. Um, they have to talk about what kind of difference I've made to them or their dogs or their lives with their dogs. Um, and some of that might be, you know, I've saved a dog that maybe was on Last Chance Saloon, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I've done that with quite a few dogs. Yeah. Um, the work I've done with rescue dogs and the people who, who run the rescues, you know, they've said, you know what, he's, he's always got time to come and sort of say, let's do, let's, let's see what Barry can do with this dog, you know. Mm -hmm. the, um, some people have thought it's never going to find a home and then our mm -hmm. dog's gone on to find a home and live a happy life and they've put, put me forward for for nominations um, proper warm feelings isn't it? it's, <laughs> it's like right in the fields it's, it's like really but that's I suppose that's what I was wondering about and the fact that it's yeah. not just um, it's not just that you're a daycare where people just drop your dogs off and you just leave them to do what they want no. you clearly are grafting yes with the dogs that come here with dogs out and then rescue dogs and mm -hmm. kind of yeah so you're seeing it all i think yes. that's clearly what it is is yeah. that a cross section of people have gone do you know what there's 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 <laughs> more he's more than just a one-trick pony that's it and um, I, for me it's not I, I love i love tricks you know my dogs can't do tricks i've got holly's dog can <laughs> but my dogs can't do tricks and then i look at some people you know training their trick dogs i'm like that's fantastic you know yeah, yeah. why why does this <laughs> appeal to somebody else uh, you know my dogs don't do any tricks they don't do anything <laughs> fancy and i'm watching some other people's videos and going that's brilliant i like yeah. that that's really good but yeah I, well, all i'm doing is i'm going out and i'm just helping people have better dogs <laughs> but that's the groundwork that's, that's the foundation yeah, isn't that's it? it then you can go out and do tricks <laughs> but not with me because i can't teach you <laughs> um but everything is essentially a trick. Yeah. Um, but in obedience, you know, to have a dog that you can walk down the street on a, on a loose lead or, or to not have a dog that's reacting to other dogs. Mm -hmm. um, again, it, it's another sort of trick, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't look great. Um, it's not showy. It's not. Self-control and yeah. focus isn't showy. No. It's almost expected from people, isn't it? It is, yeah. And that's not fair on the dogs. Yeah. Because for some dogs, they've got to work so hard, you know, to just be able to have their brain go. Yeah, just leaving the house for some dogs is just a big challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're the type of dogs that I help, yeah. which when people are putting me for the awards, um, I'm thinking well, it's made a difference to them in their lives, but other people aren't going to see what kind of a difference it's made to them. Mm -hmm. So when they have put me forward for the award, it's like, oh, they've, I've really made you know, a difference to that person's life. To the point that they've gone out of their way yeah. to, to nominate you and to say, nominate me. thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. I think that's recognition, you know? And this industry, 
whilst it's not uh, regulated in a way that kind of um, sets people up great to start off with, I think it also lacks recognition yeah. um, of when somebody's been doing something good and when somebody's actually um, been helping other people and their dogs. Um, and so it's great that there's a, a, a case like this or like with the Kennel Club uh, dog train in the air to kind of go, yeah, do you know what? Strive for that. Which leads me on to asking, for those that are starting out right at the beginning, what are some of your top tips of kind of going, you want to train dogs, mm -hmm. you want, you know, and I think on this channel people know that it's, it's reward based and we're not looking at punishment based stuff. What are some of your top tips uh, for somebody who's starting out to think, I'd love one day to be train of the year? Um, through, through lots of research into the type of training that you want to do. Um, obviously, we, we're all about promoting positive dog training. Yeah. <laughs> so find the people that are promoting that side of things. Um, not just because it's my opinion or your opinion, um, but if you, if you train a dog uh, using rewards, the dog learns a lot faster. Um, you have a better bond with your dog. There's no fallout from it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's very easy to see maybe some guys on TV um, and the way that they work to try and copy um, mm -hmm. the training that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Going, well, that guy's fixed a dog. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, With what looks like five minutes of yes, TV footage. That's it. That uh, might have been edited down and yeah, um, most of it. You know, dog training isn't it? It isn't a five minute process. It's not let's sit down and do this and then we'll have a trained dog uh, yeah. once we finished our coffee. <laughs> yeah. It requires a lot more work. Um, and, and it's not always seen on TV. Uh, I think probably the best tip for me was um, watch the dog. Watch the dog that's being trained. Um, it, does the dog look like it's enjoying it? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, big gaping smiley, <laughs> smiley face? Or is it sort of, you know, looking a bit weary towards the owner uh, yeah. or the trainer yeah. um watch it with the sound down was another one <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Take, sound off take the watch sound the down don't listen, don't listen to the uh, the person training the dog watch the dog yeah. uh and that'll give you a a good tip into what kind of training they're doing with the dogs yeah uh mm -hmm. and you know find videos you like um yeah. do, do your research into into the the positive dog world of of the trainers out there that are promoting positive dog training and see the stuff that they're actually doing with their dogs you mm. know they can do the fancy tricks but they've also got uh, obedient dogs that you know aren't going out and and running uh after other dogs that mm -hmm. kind of things because they're putting the work the work in for the recalls or mm -hmm. they're loosely walking or you know they're teaching the tricks they're teaching scent work they're mm -hmm. fulfilling that dog's needs mm. which it's essentially what all, all dog training is about. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we all want a happy dog, mm -hmm. um, but we're all leading busy, busy, busy lives. Mm -hmm. And for members of the public, it can be an hour that they might spend with their dog. And that's, that sounds like me saying, oh yeah, an hour. Everyone spends more than an hour. And they don't, they work, they get up, they feed the kids, they take the kids to school, they then go out and do a full-time job. They come home in the evening, have something to eat, take the dog for, out for an hour's walk. If it is an hour, <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. it's not. And then they come down, they go, well, we've done our bit for the dog mm -hmm. uh, by taking him out for a walk. And uh, it's a bit sad when you think about it, yeah. 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 So fulfill the dog's needs. Yeah. Yeah. Find to get you excited about tra dog training. And you go out and you'll speak to, uh, you'll, you'll go to conferences, um, you know, you'll sit in on workshops and go, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get home and do this with my dog. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not just a case of do, going to these conferences and doing things like that. It's about then coming back and doing it with your dog. <laughs> uh, just like with a dog, it yeah. doesn't take five minutes to learn. It doesn't. We've got to take yeah. ages kind of processing it, practicing yeah. it, getting Probably. better at it, and yeah. then you know, going out there. Yeah. Yeah. And then things don't work, and we can get easily frustrated when things aren't working. Um, but then it's, it's take a step back, think about why it's not working, um, do something like filming it. Um, mm -hmm. And looking back and going, it's no wonder you know, it's all me, it's all my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which even usually the human's fault. Even as a dog, uh, KCI dog trainer, year, I get, I make mistakes, <laughs> I get things wrong. Right. Um, and I posted, I posted a picture the other day. Um, I was away, so it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my dog, um, 
that I got from Jane Arden, KCI, dog trainer of the year, 2016, it's her dogs. Um, I got one of her dogs um, and he's, 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 he's got a crate at home because uh, I can't trust him outside of his crate if no one's around. Yeah. He, he finds stuff to chew. Um, and I got a, a book delivered by a, a good friend of mine, Tony Shelbourne, um, and she'd signed it for me and everything. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, yeah. I've got this book off Tony. Can't wait to get back from Hull and read this book. I get back and the book is in tatters. <laughs> it's been shredded. Haven't you not <laughs> by, by nice. my by the So rather than hide it and say, well, oh, my dog's perfectly trained. I'm, I'm KCI dog trainer of the year, so I've got perfect dogs. I posted the picture of the, the ruined book. <laughs> um, so that people see that, you yeah. know, it is easy to make mistakes, yeah. um, but by not getting frustrated, showing everyone the kind of mistakes that we can make and showing that there is, you know, there's something else that you can do to go, well, you know what, <laughs> it's my fault for putting the book there. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> you weren't there. No, no, I wasn't there. there. <laughs> but that's <laughs> but, it. It's like the, it's easily done. <laughs> it's like the Instagram problem. Um, yes. You know that that people's worlds are infinitely more perfect than yours. Whereas, mm. actual fact, everybody's got their own gripes. Everybody's got their own sort of yeah. niggles and worries and stresses and and then problems. And if you if you kind of well, especially with dogs, if you kind of say, "Oh, my dog's perfect," you're setting everybody else who's watching you up to kind of go, "Well, mine is never going to be good enough." That's right. Yeah. The eye opener for me was when I went to um, to university uh, ah. to study canine behaviour. You're leading me on very nicely. <laughs> go on. <laughs> and part of the, uh, the the degree I was working towards was sh showing footage of your dog. <laughs> Chewing your book. <laughs> Chewing my book. So I thought, oh, this is easy. I've got no issues. So I was just like, I'll use my best dog. <laughs> and I'll take him and we'll do this training. So I had to film it. And what we had to do is we had to show uh, whether behaviours were on visual or verbal cue. And it was one or the other. So it couldn't be both. So if you ask your dog to sit, um, it had to be verbal. Uh, mm -hmm. or you asked the dog to, to sit using a, a visual cue um, and it could only be visual, you couldn't use both. Mm -hmm. So it's one or the other, mm -hmm. not an issue. So I film myself asking my dog to sit and I'm going, sit, <laughs> sit, <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's only when you watch it back and you go, oh my God, I'm giving him lots of tells. <laughs> yeah. It's me thinking I've got a well-trained dog and I tried it without, for the word. I tried it without the whole head nod and he didn't know it. Um, so it was an eye opener <laughs> for me. It's like there's me thinking I'm a, a fantastic dog trainer, uh, and the do it's the dog that's understood it. It's got nothing to do with me. I might as well be somebody else. You know, it's got <laughs> but that dog. Bless you, bless us. I was so forgiving yeah. uh, to all my training faults. Don't worry, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I know. What I you know mean. what you mean. <laughs> you don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah. So your, your university degree. When did you? decided to go to university and how has that been what's what's it been like kind of going and and studying essentially being a uh, a trainer that's trained for a while but then uh for me it was more i enjoy learning uh, really enjoy learning and it was like well, what else can i do um to show that i know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. you know I, I need to learn from people uh, that are my peers mm -hmm. um, but i also need to be able to go well this is what I've done uh, without everybody else's help. <laughs> I've gone off and I've taken the time out to, to try and educate myself mm -hmm. uh, further. So that not only do I understand how to train a dog, but I understand how a dog thinks, why it thinks the way it thinks. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm able, better able to help that dog. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll obviously at the end of it, fingers crossed, <laughs> I've got something to show for all my efforts as well. So, I think for me, going, going to university has, has helped me see um, some of the things that I've done wrong over the years, mm -hmm. um, pointing out my flaws. <laughs> uh, so is, English and chastising yeah. yourself. Yes. <laughs> so I was training dogs like with my hand in my pocket or my hand in the treat pouch as I'm asking. So the dog's like there looking at my treat pouch <laughs> anticipating the reward. Um, so it was things like that I didn't realise I was doing until somebody's pointed out and said, well, you're doing this or mm -hmm. you're doing that. And, if you don't do that, then you, you, you know you do your, your dog's concentrating on what you're actually saying or what you're actually doing. Mm. Um, so you can essentially help your dog better mm. uh, understand what's expected. So it's like, and I, and I tested it myself, you know, with a tennis ball in my hands. My dog wasn't focused on me at all. He's like, they're looking at the tennis ball. <laughs> Took that out and said the same thing. He's like, oh yeah, I can do that now. 
but it was like I'd never, mm. I'd never noticed that before. Um, so it's helping me to become a better trainer. Mm-hmm. It's hard. <laughs> it's mm. really, really hard. So I, I work long hours um, and I work seven days a week. Mm-hmm trying to then fit in a part-time course Mm -hmm. which is only part-time course but when you're trying to do a part-time course on top of what essentially is more than full-time hours you know I'm working 90 hour weeks um, finding time to just go oh I'll just write this two and a half thousand word essay (laughs) Um, I've got free time yes never (laughs) ever (laughs) so it's, although it's hard, uh-huh. uh, I love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, canine science just blows your mind, yeah. um, and it, it it helps you. It sort of it gives people that are out there, you know, doing dog training something else to to concentrate on. You have to look at it from lots of different people's perspectives mm-hmm. and to understand where it's all come from. Mm-hmm. Uh, how Where'd it start? Why yeah, are we here? Yeah. Where's it going? Yeah. And I, th- I suppose that's something which <clears throat> I've kind of figured out that there's no end destination. No, there isn't. Really? No. And that's infuriating yeah. for, for a lot of people who are dog trainers, especially science based dog trainers. We kind of um, we love definitive answers. Yeah. But like with the likes of further education, you, 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 you're basically saying I'm here to learn more and then, and then I'm going to continue learning more now knowing how to learn more. <laughs> um, that's right. It's a journey that never ends. Mm. <laughs> and in a way that's awesome because then we can be 90 and we're still training dogs. Yeah. We're just doing arm tread training yeah. instead of you know, being in a field. <laughs> that's Bring the dog. We'll, yeah, do, ha- we'll do handling. When your knees are shot and you can't stand up anymore. <laughs> it's like, bring me my slippers, boy. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So, massive congratulations for winning the Train of the Year. Thank you very much. Um, almost what's next for you now? You know, or, yeah, first off, what's next for you? <laughs> I don't think there's going to be a massive change to what I'm already doing. Keep um, doing it, but do it better. Yes, uh, essentially that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my clients said, I hope the prices don't go up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dog Train of the Year, another zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's not... I haven't upped my prices yet. (laughs) Um, Because if I did, then people who may not be, you know, uh, financially able Mm -hmm. to use uh, a dog trainer Mm -hmm. still have access to me. Mm -hmm. If I price them out the market, then that's unfair on, on, on those people. So for me, it is about helping people who've got difficulties with dogs. That's why I work with, you know, the rescue dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a, there's a few in my area. There's uh, Will Animal Welfare, St. Sled Dogs, um, Dog de Bordeaux Rescue and Rehoming, massive fans of the Dog de Bordeaux breed to, to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to, to go out and give my time freely to help those people. Mm. Um, and now we've, we've now taken on more staff so that mm-hmm. staff can manage the daycare side of it whilst I need to pop out and help a rescue dog or, mm-hmm. or to collect one that's, you know, in urgent need of, of rehoming, mm-hmm. um, but may have issues getting them out of the house, that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I'll go out and I'll give my time to help those dogs, to help those people. What's your opinion on the state of dog training uh, sort of across the country? We'll just do the UK really. Yeah. Um, and specifically why, I don't, I don't know if you find this, but when you go to events, there's never a queue at the gents. Yes. You know, you go, you go along <laughs> and it's, it's 90% women and yeah. it's 10% men. Yeah. So what's the future of training and why is there a problem with men? I think, um, I think there's, there's more men coming into the positive side, uh, the reward-based dog training. Um, they're slower on the uptake, maybe, <laughs> um, and going, oh, right, that works. <laughs> um, whereas it's, it's been a slower process. Uh, men like to hang on, I believe, to the alpha pack leader mentality of dog training. Mm-hmm. Um, once they latch onto that, it's then very hard to let go. Um, we studied an- andragogy, uh, which is how adults learn. Um, and in that, it's like once they, w- w- once 
I mean, men and women, mm -hmm. once they get an idea in their head and then someone else comes along and says, everything you're teaching is wrong, it's very hard for them to go, okay, um, I'm going to look at, at that side. Whereas most of us just, no, I'm not listening then, and it's mm -hmm. working for us. Um, so then don't explore anything other than the way they're currently doing it. And I think for dog trainers, um, we need to look at all aspects of dog training, not just positive dog training, but punishments as well, mm -hmm. um, using force. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't understand that side of things, mm -hmm. we can't then say, well, that's why I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the fallout from using punishment. Mm -hmm. If we don't understand that side of things, we can't then promote the positive side of things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is an important aspect. Um, and I think when people see um, punishment-based dog trainers, using punishments and getting immediate results, mm -hmm. you know, this dog now walks loosely. Mm -hmm. But you, you'll find later on that that dog, dog's recall goes out the window. Mm -hmm. So there's always a fall off the punishment, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people don't see. Um, I, I believe <laughs> women have a more nurturing nature. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, um, in essence, their biology <laughs> is made up to, to nurture children. Mm -hmm. So you, you say to that lady, you know, I want you to smack your dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it goes against everything they, they've Inherit, inherited, you know, this um, we need to love our children and look after them. Mm -hmm. um, it goes against what they believe. Mm -hmm. Whereas men are much shorter fuses, um, much more vocal, you mm -hmm. know, like to shout, mm -hmm. <laughs> show off their big, big manly voices. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a the dog listens, or at least they, they believe. And then women are led into a, um, an illusion that they need to be louder, they need to use more force to be able to get better control over their dogs. So when they hear about another approach, they go, well, I need to look at that because I can't do what that man's doing mm. with that dog. Mm -hmm. So I need to find another avenue. Whereas for men, it's working mm -hmm. um, to a point. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then they, they just hang on to, they just hang on to that idea as this is this is the way to do it. Yeah. So what's the what what can we do uh, to kind of shift the mentality of men? I think it is shifting. Um, there's a lot of great dog trainers coming through at the moment um, who are just starting out um, and promoting that positive side. Um, Liam Landemore, uh, yeah, fantastic guy. Men he's, on board. Yeah, men on board. He's he's out there and he's promoting. Uh, getting men on board mm -hmm. in the positive dog training, uh, which is a fantastic idea. Um, and the more people, the more men that do listen to that, um, are going to be uh, better trainers. And in, in my case, uh, my partner Holly uh, mm -hmm. is a positive, uh, not only dog trainer but a horse trainer, mm -hmm. and she's got a much better brain than me. She absorbs the science things so much easier than I do. Yeah. So maybe there's a, a touch of in <laughs> intellectual intelligence there <laughs> that I don't possess. <laughs> um, so I have to read things seven, eight times yeah. before I understand it. Yeah, she'll maybe. read it and she'll say, what's not sinking in? <laughs> just got it. Yeah, just got it like that. Um, so maybe there's that side of things as well. Maybe, yeah, yeah. People learn in different ways, yeah, don't they? They do indeed. Some yeah. people learn by watching. Some people yeah. learn by reading. Some people learn by doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so essentially, I think the approach is important as well. How we kind of talk to people, and that's why dog trainers have to be teachers or have to be people. People. Yeah. You know, the people. Uh, it's, it's very rare that you go out and train somebody else's dog. <laughs> you essentially show them how to train their dog. Yeah. Um, but if you can't speak to them or on different levels, you know, you, you'll speak to solicitors and you'll speak to builders. Um, so you've got to be empathetic to all different mm. um, situations that they're going through. Mm -hmm. um, some people haven't got the time. Um, so you have to find a way of finding them time through their day. Well, mm -hmm. You know, you make a coffee surely throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Whilst you're making that coffee, do some dog training. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, I'm all asked, I'm asking for a minute of your life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you can explain it to them like that, um, they're, they're more likely to, to get involved and train um, in a more positive approach. Mm -hmm.
um, just by finding them that extra bit of time in their day. Squeezing it into Squeezing the busy it life. In, yeah. But then the, then the small things add up, don't yes. they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, someone will say to me, I can't get my dog to sit and stay. Uh, but it's like you, you get up every, every time to make a coffee, practice it then, yeah. do 30 seconds. I'm not asking you to spend half an hour dog training. Uh, do it every time you make a coffee. You watch how quickly your dog learns to, mm-hmm. to hold that position. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, they're, at the end of the week, they're saying to me, oh, my dog's doing a, a sit and stay for a minute. <laughs> you know, He's waiting for the gettle to boil. But now you can't get up and go to the kitchen without the dog following you going, let's do some, <laughs> let's do some dog training. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, I feel like I've taken up plenty of your time. I think we were meant to only talk for about 15 minutes. And I think it's been... I think- it's actually been 54 minutes. Oh, you see, I can't shut up once That's you start, insane. Once you start me talking about dogs. I've, I can't believe we've spoken for an hour. Um, yeah, but just thank you for your time today. Thank you, thank um, you for driving all that way to come and see you. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> it's nice. Good, good, good drive down to Liverpool. Lovely place. And you've got the weather as well. That's so. why we always bring this on here. Yeah, yeah, I've dragged it from Northumberland. <laughs> um, and yeah, for anybody out there who's, who's enjoyed watching this, just share it along show it to somebody else who you think oh hear barry's uh, perspective and point of view um and and yeah if you are starting out on dog training good luck have have a good sort of graft and, and work on um i can't think of anything else i need to ask you at the moment i probably will do as soon as i've left but uh, <laughs> i hope you have a good rest of your good friday i will thank you very much and thank you for your time thank you